What's up everybody, welcome to Heresy Financial. My name is Joe Brown. Over the last year to year and a half, the world has been rocked by shortages and supply chain disruptions all across the world that have made getting your hands on regular items either cost prohibitive or delayed sometimes weeks or months. And so number one, we're gonna look at the causes of the supply chain disruptions and the shortages. Number two, we're going to look at some signs that show that very soon they may be improving. Ready? Let's dive in. It should come as no shock to anybody that we've seen supply chain disruptions and shortages in many products globally for about a year and a half now. And the things that are causing these problems to persist right now, they're not the same things that caused them to start in the beginning. Back in January, February, March of 2020, you saw countries shutting down, you saw businesses shutting down, you saw supply chains literally just shutting down. Nobody was moving anything around the world, nobody was moving people around the world. This was in the very beginning stages of the pandemic. So obviously when everything goes on lockdown, yes, you're going to have supply chain disruptions. You're going to have shortages. You're going to have people going to the store. You're going to have people buying everything that they can, stocking up as late last minute emergency measures. And everybody understands that. But the shortages in the supply chain issues that we are seeing right now are not because of this. Those issues have long since been solved. The key reason that we are experiencing supply chain disruptions and shortages right now are strictly due to monetary expansion. The sheer amount of money that has been created over the last year, year and a half is the reason why these problems have persisted. When you increase the amount of money in a system, especially through helicopter money, money that is distributed out to the population, you increase the purchasing power of the population, that money gets spent. So you've got a lot more money chasing goods and services, but you don't have a corresponding instantaneous at the very least, you don't have a corresponding increase in the amount of goods and services. So you're either going to see one or two things happen here. Either all that money is going to chase the stuff that people want to buy and over a relatively short amount of time, the prices are just going to be bid up to the point where there's still a market for those items. Or you're going to see all the supply just soaked up and you're going to see a shortage emerge because all the money bought up all the available supply and nobody's willing now to sell that at the old price. Therefore, anybody willing to spend that new money at the old price to get that item is unable to do so. And especially given the dynamic that we have in the United States and in the West, where a lot of the stuff that we buy comes from China, we're importing a lot more stuff and exporting a lot more dollars instead of stuff back. Now that's been the case for a long time, but the severity to which that has taken place over the last year is a lot larger than it used to be. According to the world's largest container ship operator, routes like Shanghai to LA, they normally take about 14 days. And right now they're taking about 33 days strictly because ships are spending twice the length of the journey waiting to unload. This is one of the key bottlenecks that is causing supply chain issues right now. We're buying so much stuff. Containers are waiting so long to unload that they're having to wait a lot longer to be able to go back, of course, empty. But this is one of those things that might be showing signs that it's going to start getting better relatively soon here. Right now at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, which are the busiest in the United States, there are about 20 ships at anchor just waiting to be unloaded. That's a lot, but it's better than last month when there were 30. And it's better than earlier in the year, the peak of 40. Another key metric to look at here is the Baltic Dry Index. The Baltic Dry Index is a benchmark for measuring how expensive it is to move raw materials by ship. Over the last year and a half, we've seen the Baltic Dry Index reach all the way up above 3,000. But over the last month or so, this has dipped back down below 3,000 and it could be a sign that we've peaked. Now, obviously one of the biggest shortages and bottlenecks that we're experiencing right now is semiconductors. Whether you're trying to buy a computer, buy one of the new iPads, build a Bitcoin mining rig, or even if you're trying to buy a new car, you've probably realized how severe the semiconductor shortage is right now all around the world. A couple months ago, these shipments began and are just now starting to arrive on US shores. 
doors, which means that yes, there's big delays, but the orders have basically been put in and eventually these are gonna start coming through and making their way into the products that people like you and me are trying to buy. And finally, one of the other areas of shortages right now, especially in the United States, is obviously going to be housing. And we've seen a severe mismatch between supply and demand. And one of the shocks that happened last month was that home builders weren't building as many homes, even compared to as many that have been approved that they've applied to build, even despite all the demand right now. And one of the main reasons looks like the spike in lumber and some of the other costs associated with the, you know, the raw materials that are needed to make the products that go into building a house. In fact, when measured from the bottom in 2020 through the top in May, lumber had increased by 4 hundred percent. But as we continue to monitor prices, you can see here that lumber has pulled back and we've seen another spike now, but it's still well below its highs. And corn, iron ore, wheat, and copper have all started to level off or slightly decline. Now, these are all fantastic indications that relatively soon here, we could start seeing some easing of the supply chain bottlenecks and the shortages that we've been seeing for regular old products every day for the last year, year and a half. Unfortunately, though, if you remember at the beginning of the video, we talked about the reasons why some of these have gotten so bad and persisted for so long has been due to the massive amount of money that's been pumped into the system. And considering what the federal government is planning on doing with their next trillions and trillions of dollars of spending, especially the amount that they're planning on trying to put into infrastructure, it's very possible that this is just a lull or a calm before the next storm where a lot of other things start to get a lot more expensive and we develop new shortages and new supply chain bottlenecks as well. But at least for now, it looks like some of these are starting to cool off and could potentially be a good sign for the next couple of months, at least of course, until the next wave of government spending. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like and subscribe button. Have a great day.